Okay, I think we're about ready. Make sure uh, IT says we're good to go. I got the thumbs up. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, call this meeting to order of the City Council on December 14th, 2021. Madam Clerk, our new Madam Clerk. Councilman Lennard. Councilman Rigsby. Oh. 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 Oh, here here. Mayor Pro Tem Daly. Present. Mayor Duper. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. And just uh, for the note, Council Member Jindal is apparently uh, on a vac vacation out of the country. So he won't be able to do the invocation. So we've asked uh, um, Ron to do the invocation for us tonight. What's his name? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. City Manager, do we have any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Okay, at this time, we'd like to invite members of the public uh, that would wish to speak on any non-agendized item to step forward, and I have two cards. I have Mr. Scott Ward, and um, if you would, yes, please, come on down, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. I am here representing San Bernardino County 3rd District Supervisor Don Rao, who wanted to send congratulations and thanks to a couple of your city employees who are heading off to retirement, Barbara Nicholson, of course, and Richard Holdaway. Um, I brought presents to commemorate the occasion. Barbara, we uh, want to thank you very much as a city clerk. You're one of the unsung heroes of keeping a community moving and really giving back a whole lot. So thank you for 27 years, 35 years, wow, with the city of Loma Linda. That, luckily, I didn't put a number down. So uh, Barbara, thank you for all you have done, not only for the city, but the citizens of uh, San Bernardino County. I will yield my time. <laughs> Mr. Holdaway, could I say the same thing to you, that we thank you for the work that you've done, keeping all the T's crossed and the I's dotted over the years, and wish you the best in retirement as well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, we're actually, we're gonna do something to uh, acknowledge those retirements here, and we're gonna move it a little bit uh, further up in the agenda, but I do have another public speaker, Dick Wiley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Rich for his time and effort. I know it's been a long time down here, 
Uh, we've gone through quite a few meetings. We've learned a lot, we've seen a lot of what's gone on. And I appreciate your time and effort. And you talk about a gentleman, here's a class right here. And it's been a lot of interesting work. With Barbara, the same thing. Been real good friends with her since she was on. And I appreciate the work that she's done. And I friend, understand we've got one other leaving. And you told me about it last night. And I uh, appreciate the work that Conrad has done. He's helped in a lot of ways around here that a lot of people don't see. And it's only after they've gone that they are missed. So I think for you three, at this point, for all the work that was done and the effort and the time that was put in. So I thank you, and then if you want to try to do the pictures, we'll do that now. All right, thank you. It, this, if I may, Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you, Dick. You're an example of the sort of people that we've worked with here in Loma Linda in the community, and you're a, a good example of why Loma Linda is a great place to work. Thank you. Thank Thank you again, Dick. I appreciate it and echo the words of the mayor, I, the city attorney, I'm sorry. You will miss. Well, um, we will actually, I'd like to take uh, item number 14 and, and start with that, which is announcing the retirement of our uh, city attorney, Mr. Rich Holdaway. Um, and we have to do some little, some business. We need to approve or designate a new city attorney. And so, I'm um, not sure if you want to no, speak to that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> well, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, as you know, uh, <clears throat> I've had a good partner for all these years that I've been out here, and she hasn't always been at the meetings, but in the background, uh, she's been a tremendous resource to me and filled in from time to time as necessary. Uh, but. Uh, that is the item on your agenda tonight, um, is to uh, fill my vacancy um, as of the end of this year. Uh, I won't be totally retired, as you know, and uh, I may have some other comments later, but if we're addressing the, the agenda item, uh, it's within your discretion to make the appointment, and uh, I'll let you take it from there. And is that a recommendation from you? Uh, <laughs> you know, there, there are these <laughs> conflict issues <laughs> that I've pretty much glossed over, but absolutely. Uh, the letter that's in your, your uh, agenda packet yeah. includes that recommendation. Awesome. So do we need a, a motion, or where do we go yes. with this? If, if we don't do a motion, does he can't retire? <laughs> yes, he can't. Oh. <laughs> Good point. The, the, the motion is to approve an agreement and appoint Diane Robbins as our new city attorney as oh. of January 1st, 2022. I'll move it. Second. Okay, Madam Clerk. Se second with, it, with a comment before we do the vote. Rich, it's <coughs> in the various administrative roles I had before I retired, I always made it a point to try to find people that were smarter than me to be available for advice. And uh, you are one of those people. Uh, you know things that I don't know and you're articulate, you're compassionate, and you believe in what you're doing for the state of California and you have been loyal to the city of Loma Linda. So thank you, thank you. I, I, I have uh, I not only am impressed, I've been an admirer of yours for a while. And he's, as you know, you and I have gone through uh, similar personal circumstances mm -hmm. in losing sons. Your support and words of wisdom have meant a lot. So thank you.
The motion is to approve an agreement appointing Diane Robbins as a city attorney as of January 1st, 2022. Councilman Lenart? Yes. Councilman Rigsby? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Daly? Aye. Mayor Duper? Yes. Okay, motion passed. So um, before we put this item to bed, <coughs> um, we, I think I'm not sure I can um, expand much further on what's already been said, but Rich, you are a phenomenal person and we appreciate you and we're very thankful for you and uh, we're going to miss you. And although we have a great uh, new attorney in your place, um, we definitely would love to see you should you visit sometime. Um, and Barbara, um, we're going to really miss you also. So hopefully you will come around and visit. And I know that there's a, a internal city event thing planned, right, coming up? Or no? Did I blow the whistle on that? <laughs> okay. Okay, she's looking at me like I'm... So, because there are some traditional things we do as a city that we give to people when they retire, depending on how many years on. Okay, yeah, okay. The, the reason is she's the one who ordered it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> sorry, it take a little while to get here. <laughs> Got it, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, so we'll heap accolades on you then. Um, but anyway, welcome to the stage, Lynette um, Ariola, correct? Is that how I say it? And um, you are now our new city clerk, so welcome aboard. Um, we're sorry to see both of you guys go. Don't forget, she had been with the city 27 years. So. Oh, she's not new. Maybe that was uh, the plaque. Maybe that was her plaque. Uh, uh, okay, so if we could then, um, just moving along with that new business, could we adopt the meeting schedule for 2022? I believe it's really just informational, um, unless somebody has a problem with it. We've always met, um, the second and fourth Tuesdays are reserved for regular city council meetings. We try to agenda, agendize items for one meeting a month when possible and reserve that fourth Tuesday should business necessitate. So really only an informational item unless somebody has an issue with any of the dates. Okay. All right, um, seeing nobody object strenuously, we'll move on to item number one, which is a public hearing on a conditional use permit um, in variance. And this has to do with our ever-growing hotel chains. Good evening, Mayor Duper, Councilmen, members of the public. My name is Lorena Materita. I am the senior planner for the city of Loma Linda. And tonight I have one public hearing item for the Courtyard Hotel. To give you an idea of an existing setting, it is a 1.42 acre vacant site on Richardson. It is north of Redlands Boulevard and south of the 10 freeway. The land use designation per the general plan is commercial and it is zoned general commercial. Surrounding uses include Holiday Inn Express. It's to the west, Town Place Suites to the north, and in 2009, this council approved Candlewood, and that is directly to the west and adjacent. This area is called Hotel Square. You might have seen the name on the freeway sign driving by. Um, so this fourth hotel is, is the, um, the final point on the square. Directly north is also a city well site and South Tower. The old Tri-City Drive-In, now vacant, is east across the street, across Richardson Street. Richardson Street, the GM Truck Repair and the Eye Care Center, which I believe this council approved about a year or two ago as well, will be directly south. And not too far southwest is the Dutch Motel. So that's just giving you an idea of the existing setting. The applicant is Haral Patel with Sagement Hotels. He's been before this council several times with his three previous applications for a hotel. This time it's a conditional use permit to construct a 72,361 square feet, 125 room, four story courtyard by Marriott Hotel with related parking and landscape improvements. Along with this COP is a variance request. He's requesting to allow relief from Loma Linda Municipal Code's parking regulations 
that requires seven loading spaces at the site. He's asking approval for a reduction from the required seven spaces to two spaces at 10 by 20 feet per stall. I'll quickly go through the background. His first hotel that he submitted was in 2003. His last hotel was in 2009 with Candlewood. As of December 2019, he submitted for his fourth hotel. So between March, right in the middle of the pandemic, between March 2020 to September 2021, staff reviewed it multiple times, provided corrections. He met his corrections. And we also went through the environmental review process. And Lilburn Corp did that work. So between October 8th through October 28th, we did the required 20-day public comment period, should anybody have any comments for the initial study, the sequel portion of this project. On November th 3rd, we took this item to Planning Commission. Planning Commission ended up continuing the item so the applicant can rework his hotel design and provide additional architectural elements, pronounce colors and materials, and noticeable variation in the roof line and wall massing. We took it to Planning Commission on December 1st, the revised updated plans, and they did approve it, both the hotel and the variance request. So tonight what you're seeing is the most updated final version, incorporating all of Planning Commission's comments. Before I get into the project, I just wanna quickly go over the variance request. Once again, it's relief from the parking regulations, which would require one loading space for every 10,000 square feet of building. That is what our municipal code requires. Currently, the other hotels have either one or two loading spaces because they were approved under the standards of the East Valley Corridor Specific Plan. You may recall earlier this year, this council repealed the East Valley Corridor Specific Plan, so it now falls under our regular municipal code. The EVC required one space per every 50,000 square feet of hotel building area at 10 by 20 dimensions per stall. Due to the proximity to each other, all four hotels, they don't all require a significant number of loading spaces, which is generally associated with big box stores or distribution centers. And Courtyard would provide its own laundry service. The two loading spaces, as opposed to seven, would accommodate the delivery, loading of furniture, small appliances, and food delivery. Similar to the other hotels, the two loading spaces would be consistent with the other hotels in Hotel Square, so the approval would not be detrimental to the public welfare, welfare or injurious to the properties in such vicinity, and the project as proposed continues to be consistent with the general plan. So that is a variance. Now we get into the details of the project. So this is to give you an idea of Hotel Square. It includes four hotel brands, the Holiday Inn Express, Town Place Suites, and Candlewood, and the new one is Courtyard. Do, do you have a pointer so you can oh, help yes, us keep great up, idea. up with you? Okay, so we have, here's Courtyard. That is the new proposed hotel. Mm -hmm. South on the screen is the 10 freeway, okay? Mm -hmm. So directly west is Candlewood, approved in 2019. Then we have Holiday Inn Express, even farther west, which was, was submitted in 2013. And then adjacent to the freeway is Town Place Suites. So Courtyard is the fourth hotels. And these hotels, the reason why we're providing this master site plan is because these hotels share amenities. A reciprocal access agreement is already recorded for the three sites as part of the conditions for the new hotel. The applicant is going to update it and he'll address landscaping, parking, trash, and maintenance across all parcels. As combined, Hotel Square has more parking available than required. The site will now have a total of 400 parking stalls. As for landscaping and lot coverage, those will also meet minimum requirements for Hotel Square. In terms of drainage, there are on-site wells for each lot, so water will remain on-site. Ingress and egress for all four hotels is primarily off Richardson. There's two driveways off Richardson. And there's, there's another driveway coming from Redlands Boulevard. So it's a third access point. So now we zoom in, we see the 66 dedicated parking space for the subject site. Per the municipal code, now that we're under the, the general commercial zone, hotels require one space for every two guest rooms. 
The building footprint is approximately 18,000 square feet for a total building area of 72,361 square feet. There will be decorative concrete stamp at each entryway on Richardson Street, as well as under the Port Cochere, and that's where you, the drop-off area for guests, and it will be a covered drop-off area. The hardscape feature will complement the existing and proposed landscaping adjacent to Richardson Street and throughout the development. A bike rack will be located on the northern elevation in its own little enclave. Within the design, the applicant has assigned four dual EV charging stations on the southern side that can charge up to seven cars at a time. The site meets ADA requirements in the parking area as well as the walking path. The general commercial zone requires a 20-foot setback in the front yard. The project meets that at 20 feet, 4 inches. Side and rear setbacks aren't required in this zone, but this hotel will have building setbacks on all sides. Each side of the building will have multiple access points, exits, and entries. This design is more functional for guests and staff, especially with the shared amenities. And to confirm, this design is in substantial conformance with the brand prototype required by Marriott. Marriott, however, does allow for some flexibility, hence the Planning Commission's recommendations at the last two meetings. The changes are listed in your staff report, and I will go over them in the next few slides. But first, I'll discuss landscaping. 20% of the site will be landscaped with shrubs, flowers, trees, such as Chautauqua, date palm, day lilies. The choice of plants and location will play a significant role on how the future guests will experience their time at the hotel, providing them with natural elements that soften the walls of the building and the overall development. Floor plan. So Courtyard will have 125 guest rooms and specific amenities found on the ground floor. So this is the ground floor floor plan as part of the prototype requirement. Once you get dropped off in the front and you walk through the vestibule, you will see a lobby with an interactive layout. At the center is a bistro restaurant. Surrounded where, where is the entrance again? Right here. So right here, it has that covered port cochette right here. Sorry. Right. Okay. And this is that stamped concrete driveway. So you park your car, you walk in through, and, and immediately uh, you see the reception to your left. And, and to the, the right. the entrance is off of Richardson or off of that's so Richardson is right here to the left of the screen. Okay. So how do I enter the hotel? There's two driveways on Richardson. One is up here. I'll go. Actually, I'll show you. Is that Redlands here, Boulevard where you're pointing? Here, here's the landscaping plan, and here's one entrance on Richardson. Okay. And, and here's where Candlewood's at. And here's the second entrance on Richardson. And when you enter through here, this is how you got to Town Place Suites on this far, farther north entrance to Richardson. There will be fully equipped fitness center, media pods to attend Zoom meetings or prepare reports, and a private meeting room that can host about 30 people. Guest laundry facilities are available too and will be next to the commercial laundry facilities. There will be an art, a large outdoor patio on the south facing side of the hotel. In that patio will be a fire pit, water feature for guests to relax and enjoy. Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, if you want to keep going, then I can just ask all my questions at the end. I've got several already. But if you're looking at, is that a jacuzzi or whatever it is, at the south end? Right, right, right south and, end. And if I'm understanding, uh, and it, I'm going to turn to the feature. city manager on this, just on the other side of that is a new ophthalmology center that's going up, correct? Yeah, because there's a water system built in the garage. The GM truck center. Mm -hmm. So that's at the no oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Is the ophthalmology center. Okay, okay. But it, it, at this location, there is no pool or a hot tub. This is actually just a decorative water feature in the patio just for the, the guests to enjoy. Yeah, fountain. Required with the hotel are, there are two sets of stairs on each side, as well as two sets of elevators. The hotel is designed in an L shape, 
with varying building massing, heights, in articulated facades to add scale and visual interest for the guest or anyone who drives down Richardson Street. This is the previous elevation. This is the first set we took the Planning Commission. This is not what you're approving today. At the Planning Commission, the commissioners agreed that the design did not have enough variation and it had a cold institutional look. So they asked the applicant to provide stronger architectural elements and those I will show in the next few slides. So this is the updated elevations, and I will quickly go over what Planning Commission requested. So they requested another material. So this, we have two different tile wood materials. One is darker and lighter than the other. They should be, the lighter one should be complementing the darker siding. And it'll also add warmth to cool the, warmth to the cool materials like the glass, metal, and block panels. The applicant also enlarged the architectural fin that you see here on the northern facade, creating a column at the ground level near the center to help break up the massing of the building. Accent lighting panels were also added on both sides of the fin to help illustrate the guest entry at night. Okay, can you move your pointer a little more slowly because I'm having trouble oh, definitely. keeping up with you. I, okay. Okay, thank you. So, so we're... we're where are the tile differences? I'm, I'm having difficulty. That's a great question. Um, you can better see this is the actual tile he's going to use. So one's almost like a dark gray and one's a brown. It's faux wood. And when we get to the rendering, and we have a rendering right here, you can better see the differences with the tile on the side. Okay, okay. Unfortunately, this PowerPoint isn't the clearest one and doesn't provide they the coloring. They look the same to me on this <laughs> Yes, it actually does on, the, on this PowerPoint with this system. Okay. So the applicant also provided um, vertical variation of roof blinds and heights among the different sections of the building and that's here on the top. So it's just not one plain flat roof. He substantially increased the guest room windows by removing the black panels under the original win room windows and replaced it with double hung windows. Again, these were all recommendations per city, per the Planning Commission. He, indica he indicated the location of the AC units, and he added exterior lighting panels at both ends of the building to enhance the building at night. And so I'm, sh I'm using the pointer to show both ends of the building where he added the enhanced lighting. So, so I'm, and I apologize, because I'm the only one interrupting you. That's perfectly fine. So when we look at the at the left hand side of the of the base of the building, and you're talking about enhanced lighting, what are those green spots I'm seeing? That is are those accent lights for or the windows. Those? No, that's a great question. So it's it's steel plates right next to the windows, and that is part of the Marriott prototype design and the new color for this new prototype. So it is just almost like accent shutters for the windows. Those are not lighting. The lightings are actually at the ends of the building. They have more of a yellow tint. Unfortunately, it's hard to see the yellow tint, but again, when I get to the, the night rendering, you'll have a better understanding. Okay, thank you. The structure will be four stories at height at a maximum of 51 feet. It has been designed with a flat roof and a top parapet to screen all mechanical equipment. The applicant also revised the renderings to reflect the architectural changes in the elevations, as well as the massing, which is building size, shape, and scale, alongside the parking area and landscaping. Here, you can better see the proposed stamp concrete and the outdoor patio. So here's the proposed stamp concrete that's going to be on, on the two driveways from Richardson Street. So this is coming on through the first driveway on Richardson Street. The second one is back here and that's where Town Place Suite is. This is that outdoor patio for the guests to relax and enjoy. So that's south side. That is facing south, correct. Okay, thank you. This is also facing south, but further into the parking lot. Again, this is that outdoor patio. 
Are you sure it's a patio and not a courtyard? The, very clever, you're right. That's the out, outdoor courtyard. On the building, they will be using tile, stucco, steel, cement, and the colors will be off-white, black, lime green, gray, and dark, and light brown mm -hmm. colors. The, the actual color names are on the material color boards right here to my left. And so the exterior finish will have contrasting colors and materials throughout the site on each elevation inside. You can't see it too well here, but in the main lobby area, there will be floor to ceiling windows. And here's where the cars can drop off their bags and their guests can go through the vestibule. Uh, okay. Um, if you can speak into the microphone, mm -hmm. it would help my aging ears. But... Are we on the on the north side? We are now? on the north facing side now. Okay. So if you're standing out here, you can look towards the 10 freeway. Okay. So as design, it complements the architectural characteristics of the neighboring buildings. And one of the most significant changes the commission recommended was the addition of lighting on the exterior elevations. This rendering provides a better visual of what to expect at night as you visit the site. So now we can better see that panel lighting I was talking about that kind of looked yellow mm -hmm. in the previous elevations. So we see lighting right here all the way to the left. He also incorporated lighting on the siding of this light colored tile on both sides. And it's also this, this section right here is projecting out now. So there'll be different projections and setbacks throughout the building height variation everything that I was talking about earlier. And now you can sort of see that green, lime green tile accent piece next to the double hung windows. So as with every large project, we do have to do CEQA. So an initial study was completed in accordance with CEQA by Lilburn. Potential impact studied included the cultural, hydrology, noise, bio, and traffic. This project is required to comply with Measure V, and it does. The traffic analysis was prepared by Urban Cross Road. The project is anticipated to generate a net total of approximately 1,046 trip ins per day. And because the peak hour trips are fewer than 100, we didn't have to do a vehicle miles traveled study. It was not warranted because it is a local serving in use. Improvements were completed with the first approvals in Hotel Square, and the applicant will continue to be required to pay his traffic fair share for improvements, as well as development impact fees. And as with all initial studies and mitigated neck decks, mitigations are required, so implementation of the mitigation measures would ensure acceptable LOS consistent with Measure V during the peak hours. On the basis so of the yeah, analysis... Could, yeah, I'm sorry, can you go back to your last slide? I'm, I'm trying to... Um, my brain works more slowly than my colleagues, I guess, but when you say 1,046 trip ins per day, you're talking about the amount of traffic to the hotel on, from Richardson, is that correct? Or Redlands, but yes, pretty much that well, is... the only way they can get to Richardson is Redlands unless they go around through San Bernardino. Yes, but I'm saying they would enter Hotel Square either through Redlands going west or so, on the so two driveways on Richardson. So they can enter this hotel, if, if they enter off Redlands Boulevard heading towards Holiday Inn, they can get to this hotel? Yes. Okay. Yes. That I can is the quickly missing link. I can quickly show you again on the master site plan. Again, so Redlands is right here, so right, a car could right, enter right. here yeah. or enter through these two driveways. Okay, but if I get off the freeway, I'm not likely to go all the way around three other hotels to get to this one. Like off of Mountain View Avenue? Can, can you put the microphone closer to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. It depends where you get off the freeway. You, you can just continue, get off Mountain View. If I get it off on Anderson, I'm going to... Then you'd have to go off. north on Richardson, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm not giving you a hard time. I just want to understand. Oh. 
So on the basis of the analysis with the initial study, the city concluded the project will not have a significant effect on the environment with the incorporation of mitigation measures and is therefore prepared a mitigated negative declaration for your review and recommendation of adoption. We are required by law to do public noticing. We did notify the tribes per AB 52 and only San Manuel responded and they provided us with a list of mitigation measures for the cultural tribal resources. And as I said earlier, we did have a public comment period for the initial study in October. And for the council meeting, the notice of hearing went out on December 2nd. We mailed it to the surrounding property owners. We published it and we also posted it on site and on our website. So to conclude, the applicant is providing the most appropriate design and layout. It's compatible with existing and future uses in the area. The initial study evaluated the potential impacts and identified appropriate mitigation measures. Conditions are in place to ensure appropriate compliance with mitigations and findings have been made to support approval of the project, both the CUP and the variance. So staff, as well as the Planning Commission is requesting City Council adopt the MMD, adopt the mitigation monitor monitoring and reporting program, approve the conditional use permit, and approve the variance request. So that concludes my presentation. I am available for questions as well as the applicant and the architect. Um, could, for our edification, could you explain why hotels have half as many parking spots as rooms? Because I don't think people carpool to a hotel. A hotel. When we were under the EVC, it had different parking requirements. So at the time, Haral actually provided more parking. Uh, he was providing 1.1 parking space per room. Under the municipal code, the code requires one per two bedroom. W why it was written that way, it was possibly written, again, we have an older code than normal. So at the time, there was probably not as many cars on the street and we're still working off of a, a code from the 70s in terms of parking regulations. The, the other one so is you're, pre you're presupposing 100% occupancy. And yeah, and he's gonna have that. bouncing occupancies among the four so, lots. So I understand that, but is he worried that he's ever gonna have a, a big convention here and have to park people 100 miles away? Um, we, we, haven't, we haven't heard him worry about that, and kind of a, a secondary piece to that, if you see the site plan, he is looking at adding some additional parking along the, the Redlands Boulevard corridor for overflow. So um, it would that, be where that where? purple is up at the top, that's a long strip about 200 feet before you get to Redlands Boulevard. That's all landscaping now. We're looking at adding about 25 or 30 more parking spaces for the entire site for that overflow. So if he does have uh, the mayor's breakfast or some type of convention or something, that we can handle that parking on site. It would be the mayor's breakfast that would pack it up, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so the I've got questions if okay. Dusty's finished. Um, so there's three, currently three hotels, motels there. What, what's the typical or average occupancy rate of those three hotels? How do we know we need a fourth hotel? Sure, See, I was I trying to get him to stand up. Now he, I, I asked the right question. I knew he'd have answers. Uh, good evening. First, well, Mayor Duper, prior Mayor Rigsby, council members, it's good to be before you again for the fourth time. Uh, to answer your question, we are at about 90% occupancy right now. Across all three? Across all, well, across all two, the One third hotel is under construction. Okay. That's very impressive. I see a lot of cars there, but I wanted to hear a number. So that's good. Absolutely. So you're making money. A little bit. M more little importantly, bit. he's bringing money yeah. into the city. <laughs> you're making money. Okay. Well, that's even better. <laughs> um, 
among these three different motels, hotels, motels, I don't know the difference anymore, but um, what are your, who, who are your target consumers? Because we've got three there. So I, I don't know very much about marketing, but I know not enough to know that Holiday Inn has a consumer in mind. So, so they, they all have specific consumers in mind. Right. Uh, the first hotel, Holiday Inn Express, targets the average everyday leisure traveler for right. the most part, okay. and some business travelers. The Town Place Suites is an extended stay product, so each right. of the guest rooms have kitchens, but yeah. it's not the highest end extended stay product that Marriott had, so it's, it's basically a middle of the road extended stay product aimed towards either leisure travelers or uh, blue collar or even white collar uh, business uh, workers that, that need to stay for extended period of time. Multiple they find days, themselves yeah. on a, yeah. you know, an assignment for seven, 10 days. They don't want to go out and eat at a restaurant every day. They want to do some of their own cooking. Candlewood Suites is, is more of your, I wouldn't say lower end because there's far lower end uh, extended state products in Candlewood Suites, but the, the differentiator there is that we don't offer breakfast as an offering in that hotel. Uh, and so that price point would be slightly lower and the amenities there are a little bit less. Uh, Town Place Suites has a restaurant currently, meeting space, some larger amenities, pool, whereas the Candlewood does not. And then this final hotel, Courtyard, is primarily aimed at your uh, everyday business traveler that's on the road two, 300 days of the year. Uh, and uh, you know, your, your white collar business traveler that's on the road a lot and needs a lot of business amenities, business center, things of that nature, and looking for a higher end room. Okay, that's very helpful. And it's a perfect entree into my last question, which is uh, one of the, uh, when we do, well, I mean, my kids are all grown and gone, but when we used to do family trips, we always looked for a motel hotel with a restaurant close by because we wanted to eat breakfast and uh, whether it was a Denny's or whatever. Um, one of my concerns is we've got, you know, a, a group of four hotels here, and where are they going to eat? I know some of them are going to provide, uh, <laughs> provide breakfast of sort, and I'm, I'm chuckling because I've stayed at those hotels. I know what the breakfasts are like. Um, but uh, one of our constituents has talked with me about the possibility of having a, a restaurant, whether it's on a rooftop restaurant or on the ground restaurant. Or, and quite honestly, that makes a lot of sense to me. If we've got that many hotels, motels, all in one region, that we would have some kind of, a, of restaurant facilities in which they could eat breakfast, dinner, or whatever. Have you thought that through? And if so, what's, you, what's the outcome of your thinking? Uh, we have. I have a feeling I know who that constituent might be. And uh, the, the Courtyard Hotel does have a restaurant on premise. It's, a, it's called a bistro. It's part of their typical prototype concept. So not only will, be, will, be, will we be offering cook to order breakfast in the morning, but also throughout the day there will be food and beverage offerings. And currently we so have- So this will be in, in the courtyard? This will be in the courtyard. Okay. And currently in the town place, we also have an offering, but it's been closed in, in, during the COVID environment. Okay, okay. In, a, in addition to that, the, um, the medical office building at Redlands and Richardson that's currently under construction, right. part of the, the plant, the, the design of that building is that it's pre-plumbed and pre-built for a restaurant to be on the, the corner suite. Be the corner of Richardson and, and, Redlands. and Redlands? Redlands? Yes. So oh, there's wow. a building going in there. And so part an ophthalmology of the practice is going to have a restaurant. In the, in the south, the southeast corner of that building, there's not, I can't guarantee you it there, but it will be built out so that there's the ability to add a restaurant without doing major renovations with the goal to, to bring from the city to bring restaurants into that area 
that it becomes a hospitality hub. And part of it is there needs to be some synergy. At some point, you get a room count sure. where Denny says, I'm going to, or whoever it is, right. says, I'm going to drop a restaurant here. And we're beginning to get to that, that point. Well, well, I and think that's the point I'm getting to. And, and so I'm pleased to hear that. I, I, I think we're do, also. Do you have contact with the people that are putting the ophthalmology practice in on the corner there? I, I don't, but we can we can discuss. Well, I think I think it would be. I don't know what their incentive is, but I would think there would be incentive for you to have an interest in that for your clients. I, I think and there's also some interest in uh, again because we have such a great working relationship. Um, we're talking about what the future of Area D is going to look like, yeah. and potentially hotels there as well. So. I think there's some opportunities here. Again, uh, we've been we've been very blessed with a great relationship here um, with this with this uh, company. So, and that would make sense to me as well. It's just I want to know if we've planned it or yeah. Not. I, I think a lot of that stuff's being talked about because I've heard a lot we, of that. We stuff We are working. About. We are working. We've brought several restaurants to the developer of the ophthalmology building. They really they have not come to agreement on anything yet, but it's one of those. Um, if you bring them enough prospects, sooner or later somebody's going to fall in love. We'll get that restaurant there, with the idea, as, as Mayor Duper said, that Redlands Boulevard really can become a, a hospitality co corridor right. and a welcoming place that does not have a bus line going through the middle of it. That's, that's my point exactly. And that's that's kind of what I think we're, we're all on the for. same page there. Yeah, and, and so I, I'm delighted we're on the same page, but. Um, my question is, are we getting the cart before the horse? I support the project. You know, I'm for this. But I'm thinking about the city of Loma Linda and the, the potential clients that we're trying to attract. We want to provide them with the appropriate amenities so they don't head up the road to Redlands where they can potentially get them. So yeah. that, that's my issue here is, is it's all on paper right now. And and from an economic I'm, development standpoint, it's kind of just like um, retail. You need the rooms, you need the rooftops before the, the, the other piece follows. Yeah, so you're not going to have a restaurant outpost without enough rooms and enough people to support And fair enough, but we've them. got three hotels there right now. And, so and if we're I, getting, if we're I getting could, to uh, critical mass, yes. If I could, if I could step in, it, and it sounded like, Ron, at least preliminarily you're supportive of this, is there any way we could take a move on these this particular item because I'm gonna have to get running here sorry yeah no and, and absolutely we can if I if I can just address one more quick thing about parking uh, we, we do have 400 stalls and on the campus we'll have about 397 guest rooms so right now we do have at least one-to-one -one. Yeah. and when when and if we add the additional 15 20 stalls then we will have more than ample coverage That's awesome awesome okay can I entertain a motion do we have to do a public hearing We'll open the public hearing. Seeing nobody running forward, I'm going to close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I would uh, move uh, that we uh, adopt a mitigated negative declaration for this project. Adopt mitigation monitoring and reporting program, approve the conditional use permit number P-19-218, and approve variance number P-21-018, and approve the conditional use, well, I guess that's the entire thing. It's, there's nothing in the body of the motion, it's just the ABCD. And based upon the findings and including the conditions of approval. Of course, yes. And I'll second that, but I still have one more question. Um, uh, I'm not letting this restaurant and facilities go. Um, do you have a vested interest, and I'm assuming you do, to be sure that we provide, we the city, ensures that there are additional amenities to take care of the people that would, because I want you to have, I'm impressed with 90% occupancy, 100% would be even better. But I think in order to achieve that, we do need to look at this issue of restaurants. And real, real quick, 
not, uh, not to get into it this evening, but there has been some other discussion on some other things that we have had and Comrade and I have had that I think you would definitely be interested in, um, not related to the approval of this specifically, but yes, to get um, to really improve the occupancy and really drive up business down there. There's some, there's some other things that are going on. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree and, and uh, uh, share your sentiments that guests coming into the city and staying at our hotel want and deserve uh, a variety of amenities, including restaurants and, and entertainment uses and things of that nature. So I'm in full support of whatever, uh, you know, whatever we can do to make that happen in so or around. So you would, you would be open to working collaboratively with the city and whoever the additional potential developers are to make that happen? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Patel calls him about every six months and asks where we are on restaurants and what we can do to help him to feed his guests. So it might be every four he, he months. He has active, active <laughs> involvement in that. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm an outsider, so I don't know all this inside stuff. So. Madam okay. Clerk, um, could you call this real quick? Oh, yes. We did. I closed it. Yeah, we I closed did it. that. I'm sorry. Um, the motion was to adopt the mitigative, mitigated neg negative declaration, to adopt the mitigated monitoring and reporting program, to approve conditional use permit number P19-218 based on the findings and subject to the conditions of approval, and to approve the variance number P21-018 to allow a reduction of loading spaces from seven to two spaces based on the findings and subject to the conditions of approval. Councilman Lennart. Yes. Councilman Rigsby. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Daly. Aye. Mayor Duper. Yes. The item passed. Thank you very much and congratulations. Um, how soon can you get it in? Very shortly. <laughs> Super you. excited. I want to say, I mean, I see you've been digging dirt over there already, but uh, uh, to kind of state the obvious, thank you so much for your support of the development of the city of Loma Linda. You've obviously been very successful up to this point, taken some risks, uh, but it, it uh, by any evidence I see, it's been very successful. So it represents good management and good investment, and, and so it's been a good collaboration between city and business. May I speak real quick? Yes, but I, I'm going to have to run out the door. No problem. Um, and, uh, I, I, I appreciate that, and I just want to take a second to, to thank, as I always do, the, uh, the council and city staff who've always been very supportive of our projects and held our hand the entire way and been very cooperative both ways. So it's always been a very good relationship, and you're one of the easiest cities to work with that we've ever developed in. So. Very what's much your, appreciated. What's your projected completion date on this? Uh, for this hotel, 2024. Oh, okay. So we probably start construction late next year, and it'd probably be about 16 to 18 months after that. What's all the digging they're doing down there now, then? That's the that's number three, the Candlewood Suites. Oh, yeah, okay. That I need to get open first. All right, okay. Let's see, I can't keep up with you. <laughs> Not a Thank problem. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I believe that takes us to the consent calendar. Um, are there, is there anyone who would like to pull an item from the consent calendar? Second. All right, we have a motion in a second, but uh, I don't want to disappoint uh, Councilman Lenart. I do have a couple of questions on it. Um, item number seven, um, and, and I have to concede, I was not able to read the entire packet, so there, I'm sure there's something in the packet that I didn't see. 
appropriate uh, a million fifty for a major street arterial subprogram fund balance in six. Anyway, w can you? Put that in regular language so I can understand yes. it. Yes, when when the uh, like the hotel submit the project to the city, right. they have to pay the open impact fee. One right. of them is right. traffic mitigation, another one is regional, which this money go to SBCTA. Yeah, like yeah. The yeah, yeah. And this is the MS Major Street Arterial Subprogram Fund. is is a funding that held by SBCTA for the city of Loma Linda. So we have funding over there, so we have to get it from them. And that's what we're going to use to widen California Street. We use two funding, one from, from right, Sandbag, right, right, right. Uh, SBCT, and another one is the Traffic Mitigation Fund. Okay. Yes, sir. And what's the timetable we're projecting on that? I'm, I'm start, the goal is to start construction the middle of next month and, and be 60 day about 60, 60 working days? days so three months three months really to widen the entire well it thing. might be the hard the longest item is is the putting the storm drain and as yeah. soon as the storm drain in it, the rest is pretty easy but will that will that widen it from mission all the way to redlands boulevard no sir no sir this mission to the in the in the city church so there's, oh, there's the three okay. lots of the uh, residential uh, property yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that I have to buy the whole thing to, to be able to widen the street. Not me, the city. You know. But there's not some narrow spots beyond the Indonesian church? Yes, yes. I yes. thought, yes. yeah. But part of that, like you said, a private property for the fire purpose. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yes. Well, this looked like faces. a real bargain to me, but now I realize I'm, I... I'm doing faces, sir. Yeah. Okay. This is the second phase. Okay, yes. okay. Um, the other question I had was related to item 10 on the consent calendar. Yes. Uh, request to amend the entirety and authorize recordation of yes. the previously adopted. Can you help me yeah, understand? Yeah, last that. time when it came to us, they only asked for the uses of water. Uh -huh. But we forgot, they forgot to ask us for the use of sewer. So, so <laughs> what is they doing is we'll provide them both the water and sewer. Okay, because I thought I recognized this, but I didn't. Yes, yes, they came to us that. before. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Are there any other questions about items on the consent calendar? If not, all in favor say aye. Want to do a roll call? Do we need to do a roll call? I wouldn't think so. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no? I think we, we approve the consent calendar. Unanimously. Unanimously, thank you. Okay. Um, under new business, uh, we'll point out that we've also already discussed the uh, disappointment in losing Richard Holloway and the excitement of uh, bringing Diane Robinson, Robbins in as the city attorney. So just to note that, which we already discussed earlier. City council meeting schedule is in your packet. Any reports from councilmen? the donkey are we doing anything <laughs> about the donkeys I drove home the other day and I counted 28 donkeys between uh, on Beaumont between Holdercrook Park and the dock park is that all yeah it was a it was a light night I guess. it was a light night we've, we've light counted night. up to yeah, 80 that, yes. the I, I used to see him in other places but now I'm seeing him. some people reported seeing him down here we, we have had him as low as Barton Road certainly yeah. into into um, the, the park by Bryn Mawr Elementary um, we've had as herds as big as 80 come down. We kind of run them back up into the hills. We're working with um, an organization, one out of Texas and one in Reno Valley, um, basically the donkey, ra donkey wranglers, who uh, basically take the herds and run them back up into the hills. Um, the one out of Texas does work on relocating them, but they tend to be fairly expensive. So right now the plan is 
get them back in the hills. It's, it's going to be an ongoing problem. With the drought, the vegetation up there is pretty much dried up. They've eaten down just about everything there is. Mm. They're down here for food and water. Right. Um, one of the considerations, we do have the latitude with code enforcement or with animal control to do it by state law, but fish and wildlife isn't terrible, and, and BLM, donkeys fall under the Bureau of Land Management, isn't terribly excited. We could set up feeding stations back up in the hills and watering stations to keep them up there, but you know, buying, buying hay for donkeys that don't produce anything other than fertilizer is, yeah. is not a real good investment. Yeah. So we are we are exploring, but right now we are running them back up when we get a chance. But we're aware of the problem. Oh, we are painfully aware of the problem, yes. Okay. We have people visiting us and they said, there's donkeys. I said, there's a big coyote. I've never seen any donkeys down here. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into them on the way home and I, I don't even care. They just kind of look at you. I just weave around them a little bit. And what, what we do ask, and, and if people are watching is, Please do not feed the donkeys. Please do not engage the donkeys. These are wild animals. They're cute, they're, they're cuddly, they look really nice. They bite, they kick. They are wild animals, they will hurt you. So please please don't engage the donkeys and, and we will continue to move them back into the hills. And they will total your vehicle if you run into them. Now if we hadn't chased off the skunks, would there be as many donkeys? Um, I, I think, well, th my joke was always the skunks and the coyotes balance each other. We're just a little out of balance there. Yeah. I really think the donkeys are a, a function of the drought. Yeah. Um, even with the rain we had now, you're not going to get anything green up there for three, four months. Summer's going to kick in. It'll die off. Um, realistically, short of you know, rounding up donkeys and keep running them back in the hills on a routine basis, it's probably going to be a year before we have any real resolution to the, the donkey issue. Um, we, we certainly, I mean, I think if we took the extreme route of, of having a you know a donkey roundup and, and a bunch of guys hunting donkeys, that would, would not be an appropriate response either. So it's one of those things we're gonna have to find the right balance. Is there any interest from the California Democratic Party? <laughs> <laughs> from the what? They probably voted. Uh, they probably voted. Uh, Jeez. <laughs> they probably came down to vote. They need a spokesperson. Yeah. Oh, Dusty, you open open that up. I've got so many responses. Have, how to many? How many? How many uh, elephants have you seen? Yeah. In Loma Linda. We won't go. It's there. all donkeys. Um, <laughs> no, it 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 is. Uh, I I agree. It is a problem. I just this last weekend we had relatives over to the house and took our dog for a walk and went up in around the dog park and hauled her crooks and you go, man, people don't pick up their dog poop. And then they realize this is a dog. There's no dogs that can leave this. And uh, they had no clue that we had these uh, burrows, that's it. They're not really donkeys or mules, they're burrows, right? Yeah, California burrows. And, and if anybody is really civic-minded and a gardener, that is really good stuff. So if you're willing to rake it up and haul it off, it's worth <laughs> the effort. Free, no charge. Okay. Now, what do you call the babies? Burritos. Burritos. <laughs> All right, any other comments or questions from councilmen? Um, only question I have is, and uh, Jarb, I can come pick you up, but there are a number of houses in Loma Linda where it's tumbleweeds, and it, this is not just trying to water conservation. This is going way overboard. Okay. Okay. Good. Oh. The other question that I had is, what about the welcome to city of Loma Linda sign at the Mountain View and 10? I have to offering? order it, sir. What? We have to order. We just completed it. What happened? It. Somebody run it over? Or? Yes, yes, yes. So same thing we've had before. Yes, on, on Redlands Boulevard and to the west part of town. We just replaced that one last month. So is it possible to order some that we can just keep in stock so when 18, somebody runs 18, it over, we can send them a bill? $18,000. 18000 Yes, sir. 
And, and is that charge to the person that uh, misses the off-ramp? It, it was a hit and run. Would, would, would be, do, do we call that guy? No, this one is a hit and run. Okay. The one around the goal that was hit. Yeah. We replaced it from a concrete yeah, yeah. monument because right. they injured in the rear sewers. So now we, we went with the flexible one. But it hit it, and then you see one right Destroys it. Yeah. So it's coming. How long does it usually take to replace them? I just out of curiosity. I, I think that one probably take three months, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I think and they have a form now. This one might be faster. They already have the, yeah. the form. Yeah. And whoever blows over the sign is responsible for yes, it. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Reports from officers. I have one. Uh, this meeting will be Conrad last meeting. He is going to become a new city manager for the city of Grand Terre. And on the one hand, congratulations. On the other hand, can we vote this up or down? <laughs> will it make a difference? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did they approve it? That, yeah, that's why I came in late. They just they just approved that, so you would have to arm wrestle with the city council of Grand Terrace. But thank you for the sentiment. It is it has been an honor and a privilege to work with with all of you. And um, you know this this is really a remarkable council. Any anytime somebody asks, I just I tell them you know this is the, the smartest council, and by virtue of what they do for a living, they make decisions. They get complicated ideas, they grasp it quickly, and then they make decisions about it. So it has been an absolute treat working with you, and I, I've been so proud to be a servant in the city of Loma Linda, with Jarb and the staff and 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 the community. I really value this time and appreciate it. Thank you for that opportunity. And you will not be moving to Grand Terrace, right? No, not unless somebody wants to buy my house. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll still be here in Loma Linda? Yeah, I'll be here. And if, if the meetings go early, I'll come back here and be in the audience and give my feedback, yeah. <laughs> and when is the transition scheduled to occur? Uh, my last day here is the 31st, and my first day there is the 4th. So I'll, I'll be unemployed for three days. If anybody has any side jobs, I'd, I do. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it'll be a quick transition. And Jar Jarb is, is working on f backfilling me. I, I made the joke earlier today, and, and it's not even the joke, seriously. It's amazing how quickly you can become superfluous. And uh, it, 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 says, it says a great deal about the staff and the, and the organization here that I, I'm quickly becoming not necessary. I hear you. I know what you're talking about. I've seen it happen. I'm not sure it's applicable in this situation, but uh, I guess we're going to find out. But the good news is you're close by, and uh, I've got your cell number, and I'm sure Jarb does. So we're going to keep that voice monitor at his house still for the for the. Yeah. The rave to San Medina. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, keep, yeah. we'll keep that as a, the <laughs> rave location, and <laughs> certainly, you know, I'm looking forward to working with you know with Jarb as yeah. uh, as the two cities yeah. together. And, and on one last note, I want to thank you, um, Councilman Rigsby, for putting all the candies in front of the fat kid. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a great time. You kind of won the lottery <laughs> over there in that corner. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead. In all these years, I've never been one to unnecessarily extend a meeting, <laughs> as you know. But I did want to take just a moment to thank you again for your kind words and the opportunity to be of service here. And um, thank you for the vote of uh, support for our firm and continuing our service with you. Uh, Diana is a great attorney and even better person, so you're in good hands. I'd like to thank my wife, Chris, who's here with us. All those late meetings, she was home with the kids or in later years by herself. And I appreciate her support. Um, you know, there's a saying about what happens when husbands retire. From the wife's perspective, it's twice the husband and half the money. So, <laughs> uh, but I feel I'm in good hands with her. And I look forward to spending more time with her if we could just get her to retire. <laughs> um, as far as working here with staff, uh, everybody's been great. Uh, 
you know, we've, we've had good friendships over all these years, and some have passed on, and some have been voted out of office, but um, everybody was always a good friend to work with, and it was an honor to be here. There's so many memories. Uh, you mentioned my son, uh, Douglas and I, Pam got us down on an RDA property, ripping the roof off and mm -hmm. cleaning up the property one day, and that was, that was a memory. And uh, Floyd Peterson took mm -hmm. Douglas and me mm -hmm. around the campus and when he was thinking about medical school, and mm -hmm. I'll remember that. So there are many memories. So, you know, I spent one night counting the homeless out in the bushes <laughs> and different wow. things like that. Uh, the long meetings, the, the after meeting conversations out in the parking lot, I always looked forward to those. And, um, you know, our experiences together, mm -hmm. for good and bad, uh, have brought us together, and I'll never forget the time spent here at Loma Linda. You know, when I, <clears throat> we've moved already, but we've been back and forth, and to be honest, I don't miss where I used to live, but when I come back to Loma Linda, it feels like home, in a way. Good. And uh, I will miss you all, and miss coming to the city, although... I may show up from time to time over the next few months uh, transition period. And uh, thank you again for all your support. And it's been an honor and a, a privilege to work here. How many years have you been with the city? Well, I was trying to count that. And I was formally appointed 25 years fingers. ago. But before that, I was deputy to Gene Demchuk for a few years while he was semi-retired. Um, so I can never remember <laughs> exactly how long that's been, uh, but it's been a lot of good years, and it's passed very quickly. Very good, very good. Well, um, as I said earlier, I've, I've always wanted to be sure I had people around me that were smarter than me, and it didn't take me long to identify you as one of those people. And you've, you, ha your wisdom and experience has certainly benefited the city, but uh, uh, your personal reflection of wisdom of I have benefited from personally. So I appreciate that, and, and on behalf of the city, thank you so much for all you've done. I also happen to know that uh, um, uh, I've been part of what used to be a, uh, I don't know, a guys golf group, eight of us, there's not eight of us any longer, but we'd go out uh, every September, October and play at some different place. So I've, in the, with that group, I've played golf courses in St. George's a few times. You've got some great golf out there. Yes. Uh, golf courses are a lot better than I am a golfer, but uh, they're beautiful. So uh, if, if we come out, you may have to host a bunch of old men that look like <laughs> me. And Well, Diane's a big golfer, too, so I was just <laughs> talking to her today about coming up to St. George to yeah. experience those courses. So. Yeah. Good. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. Then I think that leads us to adjournment. So uh, we'll go ahead... I don't, got, I don't have the big hammer, but we'll declare this meeting of the city council adjourned. Do we have, uh, I'm looking through my agenda. Do we have other stuff here? Okay. Okay. Redevelopment agency. We'll call the meeting. Oh, well, it says redevelopment. Okay. Okay. My mentor, the ex-mayor, is uh, trying <laughs> to keep me straight here. Uh, successor agency, we have an agenda. And are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Any public comments? Okay, 
Move the consent calendar. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. All right, so we have a motion and a second for the consent calendar. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposition? Okay, thank you. Now we will move to the housing authority. And we have an agenda, consent calendar. Oh, okay. Any items to be added or deleted? I, I've sat no, on this council for 12 years now, and there's never been an item added or deleted on this, but so I, hmm. all right. Uh, if you skip it, then you don't get credit for breaking the record for the shortest okay. meeting. <laughs> That won't happen. <laughs> okay, any oral <laughs> reports or uh, public? Any comments from the public? Okay, now we're to the consent Move calendar. Move it. Uh, we have a motion second. and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? We are finished. Thank you all very much for coming. I appreciate okay. it.